Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at lesson 1.2, which is on sets of real numbers. Now our goal for this lesson is to be able to classify real numbers into their most specific category. Now in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and actually make a kind of a Venn diagram that will show us the different sets of numbers and how they relate to larger or smaller subsets of those numbers. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. Now let's imagine that this entire screen that we see here is all the numbers that are out there. Okay? And we're going to call those real numbers. Now we've been talking about real numbers so far this year. I just haven't called them real numbers yet. But real numbers can be divided up into two different categories. They can be referred to, they can be broken up into, I'm going to give one side a little bit more room. That doesn't mean that there's more of these numbers, but those can be broken up into rational numbers and irrational numbers. All right, and we've spent time talking about rational and irrational numbers. We said in a previous lesson that rational numbers are all the numbers that can be written as a fraction, so that includes decimals, that includes all those different types of numbers that can be written as, that can be written as a fraction. So it, again, it includes uh, terminating decimals and repeating decimals, but it does not include the repeating decimals without a pattern. Those would be irrational. So some examples of irrational numbers would be things like the number pi. That's irrational because that is 3.1415 and it goes on forever. Uh, the square root of any non-perfect square. Okay, so square root of 7 would be an irrational number, but the square root of 9 would not be an irrational number. Okay, the reason the square root of 9 would not be irrational is because the square root of 9 equals exactly 3, whereas the square root of 7 is some decimal that goes on forever. All right, um, another example of an irrational number could be 1.21222324, and so on from there. And again, even though there's a pattern in that number, the pattern does not repeat itself. So despite there being a pattern there, since the pattern doesn't repeat, that number is irrational as well. Okay? So those are some examples of irrational numbers. And again, the definition for irrational numbers, which we gave the other day, is just any number that, any decimal that goes on forever without a repeating pattern. Now, looking back at the irrational, looking back at rational numbers. So rational numbers are anything that, that can be written as a fraction. So things like 3 eighths, let me use a different color, and we'll stick with purple. 3 eighths, um, maybe we might have 1.7 repeating, 1.7 repeating, uh, we might have something just as simple as like 4.5, okay? Those are all examples of rational numbers. Now there are other numbers that are rational that are a bit more specific in how we're going to classify them. So underneath rational within this Venn diagram that we're making, I'm going to put a big circle. The numbers outside that circle are rational, but not necessarily what are called integers. Okay, so we're looking at integers now. And integers can just be described as all of the counting numbers and their opposites along with the number zeros, the number zero. So again, integers are all of the regular counting numbers, their opposites, and zero. <clears throat> so some examples of integers might be... Um, negative 2, obviously 0, 
the number one, those are all integers. Now a couple of those, those are, can be more specific than just integers. And so I'm going to make one last circle inside of integers, and we're going to call those whole. All right, and whole numbers, <clears throat> those are going to be things like um, 8 over 2. All right, now why did I put a fraction there? Because if we simplify 8 over 2, we get the exact number 4. Another example of a whole number could be um, the square root of 49. <clears throat> I know that if I take the square root of 49, that equals exactly 7. So those are whole numbers as well. And then you're just basic counting numbers, all the numbers that you grew up learning to count when you were, when you were just a little kid. So 3, 17, <coughs> excuse me. So all those numbers that you learn up, that you grew, that you learned growing up. All right, the number 0 as well. All of those are whole numbers. So within the rational numbers, within the rational numbers, we have whole numbers are the most specific subset of rational numbers. Okay, so all whole numbers are integers, all integers are rational, all rational numbers are real numbers. Okay, so let me be clear. All whole numbers are rational numbers. But that does not necessarily mean that all rational numbers are whole numbers as well. Along with that, all integers are also rational numbers. But again, just because a number is rational does not guarantee it is an integer. Okay? If it's an integer, it must be rational. But rational does not necessarily mean that it has to be an integer as well. Okay? So one more time, if a number can be written as a fraction, then it is rational. If a number cannot be written as a fraction, it is irrational. All of the whole numbers that I have there, and all of the integers examples that I have there as well, I could, if I chose, write all those numbers as fractions. I didn't do so, except for 8 over 2, but I could take each one of those numbers that I wrote in green and blue, and I could write those as a fraction if I wanted to. So one more time for definitions if you want to write them down. Whole numbers, uh, those are just the counting numbers that you learned growing up, starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up from there. Integers are going to be all of those counting numbers, all of those whole numbers, including the number 0 and their opposites. Okay, So integers will include negative numbers as well. And then rational numbers, anything that can be written as a fraction. So in your homework assignment, you're going to be asked to classify and categorize a lot of different numbers um, and give all the, the different sets and subsets that a number might belong to. So, for example, if I give you... If I give you the number... Let's just start off with 15. If I give you the number 15, and you are asked to identify all the different sets of numbers that this refers to, well, this is one of the counting numbers, one of the numbers that you maybe learned when you were two or three years old. So it's going to be a whole number. And then we know that all whole numbers are also integers. All integers are going to be rational. And all rational numbers are going to be real. Another example we can look at would just be the square root of 17. For that, if we were to actually try and calculate that, that would be a decimal that would go on forever without repeating. No, no repeating pattern. So that's going to be an irrational number. And again, irrational numbers are a subset of the real numbers. Okay? So just a couple examples for you guys. Um, I tried to use as much 
terminology in this video as I could to help you guys out with the homework. A lot of the homework questions are just uh, placing numbers in categories or kind of drop downs. So I tried to use as much terminology in this video as I could in order to help you with the drop downs. But if you have questions, again, take uh, take notes, write uh, write down your write down your questions, and we'll go over those together on Monday. All right. Have a good rest of your day and a good weekend.